and I'm the tax manager at Neil Jasani Advisors. Here at Neil Jasani Advisors, we are a team of CPAs, tax attorneys, and financial planners who work together to create the most tax efficient, holistic strategies for our clients' unique situations. The purpose of these short videos are to answer some of our clients' most frequently asked questions regarding their personal and business tax returns. So let's dive right into today's topic, the Augusta Rule, a loophole for tax-free rental income. The Augusta Rule is pretty interesting. So it kind of took birth out of the Masters Golf Tournament, which takes place annually in Augusta, Georgia. Well, the homeowners in Augusta, Georgia realize that this is a hot sporting event. Tickets are very hard to come by, and they thought and knew that it they would be able to rent out their primary home in order to generate rental income. So under U.S. Code 280A, which is also referred to as the 14-day rental rule, the taxpayer must be renting out a dwelling unit that they use as a personal residence. It doesn't have to be their primary home, but it has to be used as a personal residence, which would consist of primary homes, secondary homes, vacation homes. Uh, here, all taxpayers are qualify doesn't matter their income level or how they file their return. And the cumulative rental period for the tax year cannot exceed 14 days. So if you rent something for 15 days, it's not that you can, you know, not claim that one extra day. You don't claim any. There's no exclusion at all. So uh, in addition, there are some limitations on the rental price. It must be aligned with the market rate on that day. So if you have the Super Bowl in town or again, the Masters, typically the rental rates are going to skyrocket during that time. So you're allowed to charge a price within that same market rate. Um, it can't be excessive on a normal day where you charge a thousand, but again, it just needs to be aligned with what's going on currently. Uh, and it must be an income reducing activity However, if you do claim this exclusion, you can't deduct any expenses relating to the rental of the property. So Augusta Rule Section 280A Part G states in relevant part, if a dwelling unit is used during the tax year by a taxpayer as a primary residence and this dwelling unit is rented out for less than 15 days during the same year, the income made from this use for the taxable year shall not be included in your gross income. If you'd like to check out the code here, you're gonna find it in uh, Internal Revenue Code 280A Part G. So what's this dwelling unit they talk about? Uh, so a dwelling unit is a space are part of a structure that's rented out for the use of a home, residence, or sleeping place by one person or by two or more people within the same home. So some examples would be a single family home, mobile home, an apartment, uh, something similar, but it can't be used for office space. It needs to be uh, used for a place of sleeping. However, there's gonna be an office space exception later on that I'll discuss. So why is it such an advantageous tool and why do people want to get this going in Augusta? Well, it's twofold. Uh, one of the reasons is because you generate this tax-free income and you can uh, get a tax savings as well. So it's double dipping. Um, so if you're strategic about it, because again, you only get that 14 days. If you're strategic about when you rent it out, you can rent it out during the high time. So if you live near a popular wedding venue, uh, typically, you know, during the summer or months where people are primarily getting married, you can probably increase the rent per day based upon that high time. Um, another way is to rent it to your own business or trade. So if you have a legitimate business um, that you uh, might be able to go to a specific space, like say rent out a vacation home for a um, manager retreat or for a special board meeting, well, you're permitted to rent out a portion of your primary residence to this business or trade. So here, why it's so advantageous, renting to your business equals a business tax deduction, and you get to exclude some of this from your gross income. Uh, very important, and you need to keep uh, rental agreements in writing are the best source of the price, the time period, um, time period is important. Uh, so just keep everything in writing as much as practicable. 
Uh, again, keep in line with the fair market rate of the of rentals during that day. Um, it cannot be used as a principal place of business. It needs to be used as a meeting space or something else related to the business, but not where everything is being done. Um, it's, it's great to utilize sites such as VBRO or Airbnb because that you know, creates a paper trail, uh, keeps track of the rentals, the dates, and it also keeps track of rental rates in real time. So you're able to charge as much as, as it's worth during that time. You certainly don't want to leave any income on the table if possible. Um, sometimes you really need to look into your local ordinances. Sometimes there are restrictions on short-term rentals, and you certainly want to be in compliant with any ordinance that might affect your ability to utilize this Augusta rule. So thank you for watching this video on the Augusta Rule. I hope the information has been helpful. Nothing in the presentation I provided constitutes investment, tax, or legal advice. Corporations and individuals are strongly urged to seek the guidance of their own personal legal investment or tax counsel. If you would like to learn more about Neil Jasani Advisors or how we are helping our clients, please visit our website at neiljasani.com.